Hey everybody, Adam from Adamly Media here, and I have a quick tip on how to minimize the number of apps on your iPhone. So it's New Year, we might have a quick resolution to delete all that crap that we accumulated on our phone for the past year, just because our friends told us to, it looked cool on the app store, it was on sale and whatnot. So I'm going to go on a quick couple tips, or explain a quick couple tips on how to minimize the number of apps. And I have some uh, uh, video of me deleting some of my own apps in the background of this. So anyways, I started off with 54 apps. I was looking for around 25. Having a goal is always better, as it will keep you disciplined. So to begin, the first tip is to realize what, or to realize what apps are integral to your phone. And let's just define integral as you use it at least once a day. If you use it at least that one time uh, during each day, it's important enough for you to keep it on your phone. Simple as that. Uh, I do it with my social media apps. I keep five of them because I open all five of them every day and I delete the other five. So five are easily gone. The next tip is always try to have only one type of app on your phone. So whether that be a sports uh, reporting app or a news app, don't keep multiple uh, apps that do the same function because you're only going to use one. So on my phone, I'm going to keep uh, the score, which is a local um, sports broadcasting company where I live, in addition to Circa, which is a really popular news app, and I, I fully support it, so I don't need any other app. Those are the two main sources I'll get my news from, and now I can only use one at a time. So again, um, keep the amount of usable apps to a minimum. You don't want five news apps when they're all going to give you the same news. And so on for the sports app, uh, guitar tuner app, you know. They all have the same function, flashlight app. You actually don't actually need the flashlight app because your phone has it built in now, so, uh, believe it or not. Um, and uh, the third tip I have is sometimes when you try to delete these um, entertainment apps, it's very difficult because even though you may not use the entertainment app every day, when you do use the app, you get so much quality and gratitude out of that app because you needed it so bad. So let's just say you have a Netflix app. I don't have it on my phone, but let's just say there's a Netflix app. You only open it maybe once every two weeks, but that one time you open it every two weeks, you use it for three hours straight and it gets you um, entertained or through whatever you needed it for. Uh, for these apps, use your own professional judgment. There's gonna be a lot of apps like this, so you need to choose the ones which give you either um, the greatest satisfaction or that run the best on your phone. Um, for utilities, this is a pretty straightforward category. You either use it and you'll continue to use it, or you don't use it and you'll probably never use it again. So I highly, highly cleaned out this one on my phone. I had about four, I think four or three word mess or uh, text editing apps. So I had um, the Mac equivalent to Word, for what it's called, Writer. No, it's not. It's something on there. You'll see it in the video. Don't trust me though. I also had Evernote and I had notes and all that stuff. So I deleted some of them that I didn't seem to use. They may be great apps, but if I'm not gonna use them, then they're not of value on my phone. No offense to the apps. Um, next, I think the last one, the easiest one is actually games for me. Uh, I don't play a lot of games, so it's really easy for me to delete it, especially since I have like 20 games on my phone. I don't know why I have that many. Mm -hmm. So that's a very, very easy place for uh, me to uh, delete apps. So I uh, narrowed it down to four games. I disciplined myself to only keep four. And in the end, I deleted uh, Tilt to Live 2, even though it's a fairly new game. Uh, I just deleted it because it doesn't run well on my 4S. And why should I keep an app that doesn't run well? And probably because it doesn't run well, it won't, uh, it won't really be fun. So I chose a different app that worked great, and I'll probably be more happy with that. I think that is all my strategies for this quick video. I do have one last tip though, which is not a strategy, but probably a better life lesson. You got to the golden part of the video now. Um, when you, uh, this probably seemed as an easy task, just delete some apps, you know, but it gets hard when 
again, you have apps that you kind of have an emotional attachment to. Not that if you delete it, you'll die or you feel like you like just became widowed or something. No, not like that. But you feel like if you lose something, you lost a part of you. Which I don't understand how that feeling works with these apps. But you have to think about it with your brain, not your heart. Because your heart, it emits emotions. It emits, uh, yes, um, irrational thoughts sometimes. While your brain, it's intelligent. It thinks through this. Your brain knows better than your heart, even though your heart has more effect than your brain. But, again, if you use your brain, if you use intelligence, you'll end up on on the higher mountain than if you used your heart. And you'll be in the deepest ditch. So anyways, there's that deep thought for the video. Um, hopefully this was a short tip. Hopefully you guys are able to delete a lot of your apps, simplify your phone, and all that great stuff. If you have any questions or if you question yourself with deleting it, don't delete it. Revisit it again in a month and keep doing that because it's a resolution. It's not a quick fix. It's a resolution. So anyways, I'm Adam from Adley Media. Subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more videos coming similar to this and probably nothing like this as well. So I have a great variety. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Peace.